I'm doing new videos because of everything. Mother, going. do you think we can do the JoJo feeling? No, we're not doing that today. Oh, are we doing a video to do? <laughs> and we're back with more of the Pope on film. It's time, Bunny! Unfortunately, it is time. <laughs> yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to drunkenly saunter our way into the second half of the big show. And it is said third act, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all-new handcrafted limited edition and not available in stores, so order now, movie up! week and this week we see michael bay's attempt at a covid film asterisk with the 20 oh, right i meant to ask about that shit what the fuck with the michael bay but go ahead okay. go ahead yeah hold on with the 2020 movie songbird okay so um because michael bay was an executive producer 75% of the reviews say Michael Bay's attempt at a COVID film. But, like, I don't think that's fair. Because Michael Bay didn't write this. Michael Bay didn't direct this. Michael Bay just gave money so this could be made. This movie looks like what happens when your Coke dealer has written a screenplay. Uh, now, before we ask the, the big question, why did so many big-name people agree to be in this piece of shit, I want to do the standard opening explanation of our summer, because some people might be just tuning in right now, maybe they didn't tune in before. Yeah. They... So, okay, so every summer we do different themes. This is our fifth year of doing themed summers. First, we did the Summer of Star Wars, where we watched all the Star Wars movies, except for the animated Clone Wars movie, which doesn't count because fuck that movie. Yes. Uh, I recently watched Solo again. I like that movie. It's fun. It's, it, it's my favorite out of them. I'm still not in love with it. Yeah. It, it was fun. It was just <coughs> but fun. But if you want to ask me about... Outside of the original three, the original three movie trilogy, what's my favorite Star Wars movie? It's Solo. Yeah, Solo, <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, uh, the second new one. What is it, the Last Jedi? Yeah, yeah, that one, that one, because it tried to be different, you know. And there's like the Vegas planet and whatever. Um, I, I haven't seen the, the very last one. I haven't seen that one. Oh, you're not missing much. And then we did the summer of Saw, where we watched all the Saw movies, and that was fun. But oh my God, remember when we saw Slaw? Yes. The Saw parody featuring a bunch of wrestlers? That was horrible. And then we did the summer of Fred Willard, which was the best. And then last year, we watched movies from IMDb's Bottom 100. This summer, we're doing COVID exploitation films, quick films that were rushed into production solely to capitalize on a deadly pandemic. So just the fact that these movies exist mean that that they're pretty uh, like morally corrupt, in my opinion, because it takes a specific type of a heartless movie producer to to look around and say, huh, so many people are dying. I sense a screenplay. Yeah. So, like, all of these movies, it, most of them are pretty horribly heartless. But this is the eighth COVID exploitation film that we have watched. And I want to discuss, there's a lot of reviews and 90% of them are really cruel. But there's a specific one that I wanted to read. And it's right here on my phone. It is from the Australian website, ConcretePlayground.com. Uh, so, okay. This one offended me. This review 
offended me. Okay. 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 If there are any, if there are any words that absolutely no one wants to see when they're watching a COVID nineteen inspired movie, it's these, produced by Michael Bay. The filmmaker who gave cinema the Bad Boys franchise and five Transformers flicks isn't behind the lens of Songbird, but writer-director Adam Mason and his frequent co-scribe Simon Boys have clearly mainlined Bay's work, then decided to use its worst traits as a how-to manual. Said in 2024, uh, their tackless thriller is gimmicky and misguided at best. It is derivative, dull, and has a plot that is so stale, it really should also feature a tornado full of sharks, too. How dare you compare Sharknado to this film? Yeah. Other than Sharknado. that, though, I'm going with pretty spot on. Sharknado can be... Sharknado is at least fun. At least you can say, hey, this movie is dumb and stupid, but fun. There is nothing redeeming from Songbird. There is nothing you get from this movie. It's not entertaining. It's not fun. It's not informative. It has nothing to say about the coronavirus. It was just made solely to cash in on a disease. Fuck this film. Yeah. I First, again, this movie is not about coronavirus. Coronavirus is just the thing to get you fucking attention and cash in. Even in this movie, it's not the coronavirus that we're dealing with. It's like coronavirus 2023 or some shit. So it's a variant that we don't even have. And that's fine, whatever. But they don't build on that. They don't capitalize on that. You can take it out completely and put in anything else like alien invasion. You know, yeah. would fit just as well. Uh, zombies possibly would work. You know, anything life-threatening that caused the government to have to clamp down on shit to try they, to make sure that people survive. And at least, at least the other movies that we have seen this summer during our summer of COVID exploitation had like a purpose to them like i hated uh corona aka fear is a virus aka how in the world are you making this entire film set inside of an elevator but it's at least that one had a theory which is hey don't be racist not all chinese people have the coronavirus okay so like right uh, anti coronavirus, the movie, aka fake crying, the movie that one had sort of a, a a a thesis. The thesis was if you pray, you don't get the coronavirus, which is bullshit, George. But whatever. And then twenty twenty five, the world enslaved by a virus was just fucking wonderful. But like this, the balls of this film, it basically turns the coronavirus. <coughs> Into a <coughs> MacGuffin. Yeah. That, like, the coronavirus isn't even a part of the film. Like, like fuck! Fuck this <laughs> movie! The coronavirus isn't even important. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a side piece to this film. And it's, and it's all just their interpersonal bullshit... And it never expands on the world yeah. that you're trying to comment on? Yeah. You know, what exactly are you trying to comment on here? I mean, like, Demi Moore says it'll be illegal to have the kids' friends over. Okay, can we expand on that a little more? Like, yeah. who's in charge of the government, maybe? You know, when did it become illegal? Can All I, get I know more? is, like, Demi Moore looks like if you're out trick-or-treating, you would just skip her house. Demi Moore looks like she's 60 years old at a bar with her 25-year-old daughter saying really loud, 
Do you think we're sisters? Do you think we're sisters? A lot of people think we're sisters. Yeah. Totally knocked over my microphone, but it was worth it. Yes, there was. Yes, there was. Uh, if there was, if if any candy was gonna have a razor blade in it, it would be from the stop at Demi Moore's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Songbird, twenty twenty film about the pandemic. This isn't the first coronavirus movie, but it's essentially the first major Hollywood movie because this actually had a bit of a budget. Um. This is, this was so freaking rushed. This was so freaking rushed. They started writing it in March. They announced the casting in May. They started filming in July and it wrapped in August. And then it came out in December of that same year. So the turnaround from this film was, hey, I've got an idea to hey this is a movie you can watch was f just from march to december of 2020 that's how quickly they rushed this movie into production yeah that's that's quick as hell uh the it was rushed into production with a roughly 2 million dollar budget which yeah in in hollywood standards that's pretty low but compared to the other movies we've seen this summer yeah. This might as well been a freaking David O. Selznick production. Yeah. You know? That's 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 a lot more money than Mitesh Patel had for his. Well that's movie that's what had me months. that's what had me scared walking in like okay, this movie is going to be propaganda by professionals. Yeah. So this might hurt. You know, like there were times when I was watching this movie where I was like, is this an anti-vax film? Is this an anti-science film? It features vaguely Trumpian because there are uh, those scenes in there where it's like, oh, so what? We're all being forced to stay in our homes like prisoners? And it's like, it, it kind of feels a bit Trumpian, you know? Yeah, but they never come out and, and actually say yeah. they don't anything. Yeah. Anything. And this like a lot of the a lot of the words and a lot of the dialogue was just like really vacuous, and you could put whatever spin you want on it. A lot of cases, they just chose aggression. Yeah, but you're absolutely right. You could just you could just turn this into a film where oh, there's a disease in the air it turns people to zombies. Oh. There's a sickness in the air and people are getting... You can even just not put a disease and just put like, oh, it, this was the worst X-Men movie I've ever seen. Yeah. And apparently they're taking, taking people away and putting them in some kind of quarantine like outside the wall somewhere or some shit. Yeah, but also we never get to see that. No, and nor yeah, and is it really explained. There's a lot they don't explain in this film. What I would like to have explained is, I would like to see the exact point in American history where the government said, hey, trash collectors, you get to kill people now. Yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. But, yeah. This was released straight to digital, and because this picture sucks, I assumed it was... I'm, I'm going to go ahead and assume that this was also on Redbox. On Redbox? Yeah, that's still <laughs> a thing, is Redbox. That feels so archaic. Yeah. Redbox. It made roughly $400,000 as a digital release, so this thing royally bombed, and good because it deserved to bomb. Despite the appearance of some big names, Bradley Whitford, what are you doing in this film? Yeah. You're good. You're a good actor. You were the best part of fucking Cabin in the Woods. I loved you in that. Yeah. 
And what what, what about that 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 guy? The one, well, a few a few of them broke my heart. Yeah. Uh, and I can never remember his name. The garbage man. Oh, you said uh, his name. Peter Stormari. Yeah. Fucking oh, love yeah, that guy. The... For, I mean, one of the greatest character actors in the world. We what believe are in you nothing, doing Lebowski. Here? What are you doing here? And then I mean, fucking, he was in Armageddon, eight millimeter. Uh, he was in the Big Lebowski. Fucking Fargo. He was in Fargo. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. That 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 broke my heart when he when I saw him in this. The, the, and, the, and and the other guy, the comedian, I forget his name, does a lot of. Um. Uh, Franco movies, James Franco movies, Seth Craig Rogen Robinson. movies. Huh? Craig Robinson? The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that yeah, almost amazing. made me cry. Yeah, he's yeah, the guy who the, the guy who was in charge of the couriers. Lester. Yeah. Yeah. The one that killed me was Paul Walter Hauser was in this. Which one is he, and is he related to the ever famous Wings Hauser? He starred in the film Richard Jewell. I think he was nominated for that. Uh, we know him. He was Jeff Galuli in I Tanya. Okay. And I know him because, uh, did you ever see the movie Cruella? No, but I have it for some reason. It was pretty good. The soundtrack is amazing. The Doors ended yeah. up in a Disney film. It's not bad, and uh, Cruella has two henchmen. One is skinny and smart, and the other one is fat and stupid, and that was Paul Walter Hauser. Okay. He was really good in Cruella, but I know him primarily... Uh, he auditions for a play and gets the part, but all his lines get taken by Jamie Taco in a great skit from season two of the greatest television show of all time. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. <laughs> I'm never going to say my lines faster than Jamie Taco. <clears throat> so the fact that like he was nominated for an Oscar, what are you doing in a wheelchair in this film? Flying yeah. drones. You poor, poor man. It it broke my heart that Paul Walter Hauser was in this. Like, oh, poor thing. Ah, oh. Funny, the million dollar question. Why did so many names agree to be in this film? I'm going with the theory I said earlier. It, what? It, it, it's, it's their Coke dealer. Their Coke know, dealer... You could tie each one of these people to the Coke dealer who wrote the screenplay. I'm thinking either... The, the first thing that I thought up was that... Oh, Michael Bay's making a film? Count me in. But then I thought, oh no, I don't think Michael Bay's name would get some of these like like fairly serious actors. Yeah. Like Demi Moore and Bradley Whitford and... Uh, uh, Paul Walter Hauser. So then I thought maybe it's because since this film was made in like June, July, August of 2020, maybe this was the only job they could find because of lockdown and everything being canceled. Maybe that's why they did this movie. Maybe. Maybe the only reason I can think of so many big names being in this film is is that so few movies were being made during lockdown that you either got a part in Songbird or How It Ends. Yeah. And Bradley Whitford was in both. <laughs> he was the dad in How It Ends. Oh, what a great film. If you haven't seen the comedy How It Ends, go and find that. Because it was filmed during lockdown in L.A. and it's freaking wonderful. I yes, love it is. that movie so much. So, Bunny, do you want to hit us with the plot? I mean, not really. 
Okay, was, that's I'm fine. Not you don't dead have sure to. about what the plot was. And this was a movie that it was like, you know, I, I should really watch this again, but I fucking flat out refused to watch that's it fine. a second time. I only, I uh, only saw it once, and that time yeah. was difficult. Uh. It's set in 2024, so we're only two years away from Archie being a sweaty bike courier. Yes. So, yay. So, and there are so many names in this. Um, Craig Robinson and uh, KJ Appa, uh, Archie from Riverdale, and Peter Stormari, Demi Moore, Paul Walter Hauser, Bradley Whitford. Leah McHugh was the daughter of Demi Moore. She was the young kid from Eternals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was a hummingbird? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of hummingbirds outside. What a forgettable MCU movie Eternals was. Yes, it was. How is it? That every Marvel movie after Eternals doesn't bother to mention the fact that there's a giant god sticking out of the freaking planet. Yes. How is that not the main plot of every film after Eternals? Yeah. I know, I know, I know, baby. Anywho, this movie is trying but to. But it was finally lot. mentioned in She Hulk. Yeah, but like as an afterthought. Yeah. Not as like a plot. You would think everyone would be mentioning it, but whatever. Uh so this movie is trying to be too much. So much that it doesn't land anything. Yes. And I and I said this earlier that this film feels like one of those art films like Magnolia or Pulp Fiction or Crash where here's like 12, here's 15 different leading characters and each one has their own separate plot line and by the end they've all tied together but this is like less like Crash and more like Southland Tales. That this yeah. is all just a mess and none of it lands and there's not that much of a plot or a budget. There's just nothing to be gained by watching that. It's not entertaining. You don't learn anything. It's not fun to watch. It's not well written. The it's acting, they're just phoning it in. You didn't see Songbird. It's Stop it. it. There's too many bad, badly written characters. The only good part about it is that the movie's a tight hour 20. Yeah. Yeah. But also, you have so many different characters. Here's the here's the rich wife who's angry at the husband. The husband who sneaks off to have sex with the uh, popular streamer. Here's the popular streamer that is starting a relationship with the guy in the wheelchair. The guy in the wheelchair who flies drones for the guy who's running the company. Yeah. The company that Archie works with. The company that Archie works with to raise money a, who is in a relationship with the woman. The woman who has the grandmother. And it's like you have so many plots, so many characters. This is an hour and 20 minute film. I'm not saying that I want like a three and a half hour director's cut like Waterworld. I'm just saying that like this is a short film with way too much plot and none of it lands no but i was trying to figure out about this movie and i did figure out something the film was written and directed by adam mason he's prime he's primarily a screenwriter although you wouldn't know it from this horrible script he usually directs music videos when you know that some of this movie makes sense yeah it's okay. like the cameras to the side the cameras tilted here's some quick cuts here's a big close-up now it's back and it's like oh, okay so this is a movie that's trying to be flashy but doesn't really have any uh actual meat to it no. there you go this is this is this there you go well that's Lost kind of me. what i meant it by by like it seems like it was only like half written yeah you know, and like where where I'm not sure what the word is, like we're trying to imply too much, 
that isn't there. Like you know, like you got the scene where the old guy is gonna go like check on his flowers or something. It looks like he's got a little end off area where he's got plants and stuff. And Demi Moore was like, "We better burn those clothes before you come back in." Yeah. And then we see him in a scene later, and he's burning his clothes. And it's like, but like, that's all like, it doesn't have to be that way. There's nothing in the movie that's implying (laughs) that it has to be that way. And it couldn't be like, oh, remember, you got to burn your clothes before you get back in. Because we are in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, cool. (sighs) You know, I want to see my plants. It's worth a set of clothes. Well, that part I actually You know what I mean? It's, it's because... like it's like it's not really saying anything. And well, that part actually spoke to me cuz I have 3 kids that are doing in-person school right now. And every time they come home, I make them take off their clothes and burn it in the front yard. Yeah, for you know, just for for safety reasons. Yeah. And then I get a big hose and I water them down and the kids are yelling, it's a mad house! (laughs) A mad house! So, yeah. the This is apropos of nothing. The woman in this movie that is the streamer who sings songs, uh, that is, what's her name? Alexandra Daddario. She is wildly upsetting to me and I have no idea why. I have no idea why. But anytime I see her, I just go, oh, it's her. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have no idea why because she's an attractive woman. She's talented. She's a good actress. But for whatever reason, I just have, I guess, just a Daddario blocker. Yeah. And she appears in a movie, and I go, oh, it's her. Some people are just like that. Oh, okay. All right. The Daria. There are some people that you just don't like for no real reason. Yeah. And, and, and she is one of those people to me. I have no yeah. idea why. No idea why. What was the name of that religious movie we saw with, uh, with, uh, with frickin' Archie in it? Uh, KJ that was Papa. that was like I still believe, and that's KJ. where we're running into some confusion, because like the the Fred Willard one was I'll believe you, yes, but the Archie one was I still believe, yes, I still believe. Here you go by A J Appa. Yip yip. Uh, 2020 American Christian romance film. Man, he did... 10-minute warning. He did both of these films back-to-back in 2020. Wow, what an incredible actor! Yes. Fucking A.J. Appa. K.J. Appa. Yep, yep. He is 25 years old. Oh, he's a New Zealander. Okay. He gets this much of yeah. leeway from me just for that. I'm enough of a uh Flight of the Concords fan that I'm going to I'm I'm going to give KJ Appa Yip Yip a little bit of leeway. I would still like to see him stereotyped as Archie for the rest of his life. Absolutely. I would I would like to see that. Yeah. I've never wanted nothing... to see anybody actually be typecast before. I want to see it. I want to see him pop up from time to time for the rest of my life being Archie kid? somewhere. Archie has a kid? I don't think he's married. <gasps> he's had a child out of wedlock? He had he has a kid with French model Clara Barry. What a what an American sounding name for a French model. Yeah. Chuck, it's Clara. 
your cousin Clara Barry. <laughs> um, so there's there's nothing to be gained by watching this movie at all. It's no. not entertaining. It's not fun. It's not funny. It's not thrilling. You don't care about the romance. You don't care about the 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 other romance. You don't care about the trash collectors that get to kill people it's just boring and stupid and tedious it's a dud i never yes. thought i'd say this but the coronavirus comedy about alien apes and memes and harambe was a million times better than this big budget thriller with an all-star cast yeah oh god yes it's like fuck i would rather see the bizarre low budget harambe based comedy coronavirus conspiracy then have to watch this star-studded movie again yes period oh Ram god no Ranch. this is fucking boring yeah yeah so so that's all i've got for this week's movie songbird it's shit even if you're a fan of riverdale and archie there's no point in watching this film no at all Go watch How It Ends. It's a comedy. It also has Bradley Whitford in it and uh, Charlie Day from uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, the good... Tom Hanks' good son is in it. <laughs> uh, not the white boy summer. I had I had a, a hot girl summer. And yeah. it was great. But uh, that's it for our eighth movie in the summer of COVID exploitation. Next episode, which will be episode what? 438. We are finishing up our summer of COVID exploitation with Virus Shark. Virus Shark. Shark who gets a deadly virus. I don't think that they specifically call it the coronavirus, but there's a deadly virus going around and the shark gets the virus. So then it becomes a virus shark. I'm pretty excited. It it has going to be Going by the title, yeah. It has to be better than Santa Jaws. Yes. Because that Which was wasn't horrible. bad. It was it it was bad in a good way. Like 2025, A World Enslaved by a Virus, which also everyone should watch because that was yes. freaking hilarious. So that's next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, oh, man, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, Peter Stormari. It's so uh, I think you should leave. Anita Bryant, Orange Bird. Anita Bryant and fucking Orange Bird. Yeah. Uh, uh. Little Orange Bird, Little Orange Bird. It was a catchy song. It's cute. I gotta say, I think that this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode of okay, the podcast. Okay, good. Good. I, I, I felt the same way, but I didn't want to say it out loud because I feel like you're the one who makes the distinction as to whether or not it's a, it's, it's good or it's damn good that that that's that's a moniker that you get to affix to the podcast and i didn't want to step on your toes but yes i concur with your assessment good sir so until next week i am bunny williams and I am May Lynn, and on behalf of eleanor and uh, everybody else I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Can you say Mal's part, Gizmo's part? Because I think Gizmo is in the bath or a shower, so say Gizmo's part for me. Dishwasher and poopy toots. If you douche waffles and poopy toots, <laughs> it is uh, Gizmo's. Douche waffles is, is a, a, a bad word that Gizmo created on their own, and I love it, and I call people douche waffles all the time. Poopy Toots is actually uh, what we call Pop-Tarts in this family. Yeah. Because I have a habit of, of, of 
uh, pronouncing things wrong. So if, for a while, we would say uh, we had uh, fruity dino bites. So I would call him, kids, what do you want for breakfast? You want some duty bito bites? You want some duty booty foodies? You want some fruity booty dude duty boot foods? So now we just call well, uh, fruity dino bites duty well, boot foods. Well, but back in the day... Mal was saying douche waffles, and poopy toots was supposed to be Max's catchphrase. Ah! But he kept forgetting to say go. it. You kept, so, so Mal, Mal would, would say it, say it for, for him. There you go, douche waffles and poopy toots. Yeah, because uh, I would say you guys want some poop, some poop tarts. They're not poop tarts. Yeah, they are. They're poopy tarts. They're made of poop. They're poop tarts. They're poop. They're poopy toots. You want some poopy toots? So you would say poopy toots. That was your catchphrase. Okay. So douche waffles and poopy toots. And you virus sharks. Nice way to tie it together. Eleanor. <laughs> and you. You got two minutes and twenty four seconds to that? wrap this up. We bear bears. And you we bear bears. That's a good cartoon. Okay. Do, 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 do. Stay, microphone. Stay. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Come over here. You got to put it on a cookie. You've kind of got two bits at the end. Okay. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Cut and print. Put it on a cookie. That's a wrap. Woo.